Hey everybody, it's Emily from Naptime Creations and today I've got a two-part super fun um, sewing, kind of not sewing project for you. So um, today I'm going to be making a shirt, which is definitely a sewing project, but it's half of a um, Halloween costume, which the other part is I, I'm going to do a no sew um, tutorial. So anyway, we see my rainy view out the window this morning. Um, and this is the part of Hong Kong that I live in. And um, I wish I could do, I tried to do a live outside one time when I was doing um, some shopping. And if you watch that, you saw that it was kind of a flop. Um, the, I have a data for my phone, but apparently it wasn't strong enough to do live. And when I'm inside, I can use my Wi-Fi. So anyway, I could give you a tour of Hong Kong, but it probably wouldn't work to do a live. So anyway, we are here and to, this morning we're going to cut out a shirt. So I've already traced um, the t-shirt pattern onto tissue paper. It's going to be long sleeve. Here's the sleeve. And this is from my free girls t-shirt pattern. It comes in sizes um, 2 through 10 or 12. I'm actually not sure on the higher end how big it goes, but a huge spread and you can use it for any projects you want. Of course, it just makes a classic long sleeve t-shirt. It's a bit of a tighter fit than the boys version, which is why I call it a girl shirt, but technically you could sew it for a boy, um, but it's a, a bit more of a fitted tee. So that's why I've labeled it, but sew it for who you want. Um, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna care, but the boys t-shirt is a bit of a looser and the girls t-shirt is a bit more fitted. So you can grab the free pattern in the description to this video and make sure that you like me on Naptime Creations so that you can, um, when I make the tutu skirt on Wednesday, that you'll get notified that I'm going live. So we'll be sewing, we'll be making the skirt on um, Wednesday. Um, the couple different things that I'm gonna do to this pattern are, the main thing is I'm gonna put a woven fabric on the back of the shirt, okay? So this is not stretchy. It's just, if you recognize this, I made I use this to make a tote bag this summer on a sewing show. So, but I think this looks like a really fun peacock type fabric. So I'm going to use up this scrap and I'm going to use this for the back of the shirt. And then the front of the shirt is going to be this pretty royal blue. And it, this is a knit stretch. So I'm going to use this for the sleeves and the front. And so in order to make the back out of woven, I've done two things. One, I use the width of one size larger. Not the length, because my daughter's not any taller, but I want a little bit wider in the fabric because, um, yeah, you hear my daughter in the back yelling. She's watching TV in the other room, but um, she just was yelling there for a minute. So Rose is here, um, but she's not with us at the moment. Um, so anyway, so we have, I've made this a tiny bit wider. Probably the pattern is about maybe a quarter inch wider on the next size up. And then I'm also going to add a keyhole um, in the back to be able to get it over her head because it's not going to have the same stretch because it's not going to be knit in the back. So those are the couple things. I'll walk you through the changes. I think it's going to look really cute and I think you could use this not for a costume. I think it'd be a great um, way to make a long sleeve t-shirt look a little bit different whether you're making a costume or whether you're just making a t-shirt. So that's what we're going to be doing today and I'm going to start by cutting out the back, um, which is the um, woven fabric. So we'll make sure we got we have this going um, with the pattern in the right direction. And let's see, where are my pins? That's a good question. How can a whole container of pins disappear? Hmm. Oh, I found them. I found them. I'm back. Too many things going on in the sewing room to see where everything is. So, all right. So we need to cut one on the fold for the back. 
and the seam allowances are included in all of my free patterns. So you don't have to worry about adding that onto the pattern and you can just go ahead and cut it out. So we're going to obviously cut this little keyhole and then we will be making a facing for it, but I will will walk you through that step as well when we get there. So, all right, I'm gonna cut this out and um, we've had some really hot weather here the last week so I'm the rain is actually kind of welcome because it probably won't be as warm today and I'll take it on and um, it's definitely not mid-autumn as far as temperature wise um, but as I guess in the lunar calendar it's the mid-autumn but it feels still like it's 100 degrees here so I don't feel anything autumn about it, but um, we just celebrated the Mid-Autumn Festival, which is lanterns and um, carnival and all kinds of really fun things. So we went camping and enjoyed that. So here's my keyhole that I've cut out of the back and we'll add a, um, a facing to that. So um, Cynthia, so glad to see you. Um, it's always fun to um, catch new people and Ingrid, I'm in Hong Kong. So originally from the US, obviously you can probably tell that. Um, I grew up in a small town in Wisconsin, but I've lived here in Hong Kong for nearly, oh, so long now. I think 13 years going this, uh, starting my 14th year. So um, it's been a while, but it's been a great, um, a great run. So Tamara, nice to see you. Um, okay, so I'm trying to figure out here uh, how to cut, I need to cut my um, a facing to line this keyhole. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a pen and I'm going to trace the curve that I made on this, the back of this shirt. And then what I'll be able to, then I'm going to draw around and I'll cut this and we'll have some extra. Um, I'm making it a little bit bigger than we need but we can always make it smaller later. And um, this will line the back of that hole that I just made in the shirt. Okay, so we've just cut this which we will use to line the back of the shirt. So um, I'm gonna add that on. So I was um, Hong Kong, I followed my husband here. He had been, he's from the US, but had been teaching in Hong Kong when we got married. And um, I came to teach. So I taught here for several years. And then when I had kids, I stayed home and um, I stayed home with them and then I started blogging and sewing more. I've been sewing um, for a long time but um, I started sewing more when I stopped teaching. So, okay, so, oh, Mylene, I'm so excited that you're staying up to watch me. I hope you're able to sleep in in the morning. Ingrid, I'll just take a quick moment and explain the bias, but um, when you have a fabric you have a grain line right and a grain line is usually on a grid so it would be across and this way when you cut fabric on the bias you would cut it on the angle which goes across the the grain line like this okay so instead of cutting straight if you're cutting on the bias you cut on an angle and that's a super basic description but you can get started from there so hi Rose you can eat in here yeah um, can you turn the air conditioning on honey can you flip that switch the bottom one. Can you turn that for mommy? Just realized I don't have the air on and it's warm here. So anyway, um, the earlier part is that we're sewing a girl's t-shirt pattern. And just a second, I've got Rose here, this one. And um, I'm making it for a peacock costume, but you can also use this to sew any long sleeve t-shirt. So we're cutting the back from woven fabric and we're going to cut the rest of it from this pretty royal blue knit. So I need to cut a front, I need to cut the sleeves, no, no, leave it on, thank you, cut the sleeves, and I need to cut the neck line, the neck binding, 
Okay, so I'm going to make, um, we're going to do the front. You can eat there, that's fine. So do you want to come say hi? Huh? Do you want to come say hi? Did you finish your show already? Huh? Did you finish, did Curious George finish? Hi. Hi. Good morning. <laughs> She'll, um, she does not have a very long attention span for TV, which I appreciate and I don't mind. I'm glad she doesn't like to sit and watch it all the time, except for these mornings when I'm doing my sewing show, I actually wouldn't mind if she would watch for a half hour while I was sewing, because then I don't have to worry about what she's getting into, and um, yeah, it would be a little easier, but we appreciate that she just likes to do other things. All right, so this is the front of the shirt. So we've cut one on the fold as well, okay? And then we're gonna cut the sleeves. Honey, you can't climb up there right now, okay? Be careful. And we need to cut two sleeves on the fold because obviously you have two arms. It is gray out there today, but I do really appreciate this view. You want your baby out? Um, I do appreciate the view that I have out my window while I'm working. We have, um, this is kind of like a window sill area, and I've put in this counter because otherwise it's just really wasted space, and all of our rooms have this. Um, window ledge in every room and I think they do it because technically they include this in my floor space so they can say the apartments are bigger than they actually are as far as floor space because they technically count this in the square footage so um, you know not not my favorite but so we've tried to make the best use of these areas um, and so this one we have storage under here and in some of the, in the boys room, they have like a little cushion. So it's kind of like a reading area, but, um, it's, it's a, kind of a tricky thing that they do here when they say that we have so many square feet and then all of a sudden, I don't think the floor space is actually that because they've counted some of these extra areas. So. I've turned it into a workspace. We put in a countertop and some storage underneath to raise it up because it's actually kind of low. So um, just trying to make space usable. Um, our place isn't very bit big to begin with. And then if it's not exactly all that big, you want to make sure that you make the most of your space. So um, all right. So the last thing we need to do is I need to cut some ribbing to go along the neck and then we will um, start sewing. So let's see. Just this should be enough. Um, cut off all these small scraps. Um, I'm just trying to cut, get a nice straight piece here. Sometimes when I've got so much fabric, it's hard on my small space to get it straightened out. I often will cut on the floor for that reason, is because it's easier to lay out big pieces of fabric. But no one wants to see my floor, so we're cutting on the counter today. All right, so we're gonna cut, um, for the neck, I'm gonna cut it an inch and a half to make a narrow neck binding. 
and that's what we'll put around oh, the neckline. Okay. And then I'm also going to use it, um, I think, to make a tie in the back. I haven't quite figured out how I'm going to close the keyhole, but I'm pretty sure I'm just going to add extra of this and tie it in the back. So, Pat, there is a great fabric market here. And I've actually, I did a video where I showed you around the fabric market and it was really fun. So um, the blue is from the fabric market and this is from Joann's when I was back in the States over the summer. So, all right, so we're, you get a little upward view tour of my space and moving back over here to see if we can do this so let's see if we can move this all right okay little um roses yogurt is around all right so i think i have everything over here that i need help you what push it up okay um all right, we're gonna start by doing the um, the neckline. And so I'm gonna have to take the back and the front. And I'm gonna, well, maybe I, I should probably put the facing on the um, keyhole. So you can see that this is the back and then this is what I've added to the pattern. I just cut that out, okay? So I, I should probably finish this first. So um, let's put this here where you can see. So I traced, I traced it so that the, the lines match up and we can just sew this around and then we'll flip it over to the wrong side and top stitch it. And then that will finish the hole because this is, um, Oh no, sewing machines dying is very, very sad. <laughs> Should have a little funeral for you this morning, uh, Nanette. That's not very fun. Um, yeah, I would be very, very sad. All right, um, because this is woven fabric though, I do need to finish the outside um, edge of this or it will fray. So I have a serger, so I'm just gonna serge around it. Um, if you don't have a serger, you could just fold under um, and hem it on your regular sewing machine. Um, but I'm just going to buzz around the outside to finish that edge and then we'll sew it to the shirt. And curved edges can be a little trickier on the serger because it doesn't always like to turn so easily. But I think with practice it's not too bad. All right, so I've just finished the outside, and now with right sides together, we're gonna sew this to the shirt. If you're just joining, um, today we are sewing a shirt with a woven back. And you know t-shirts, generally the whole thing is knit. I mean, right now I'm wearing a shirt. I didn't make this, but um, you know, it's knit fabric on the front and the back. So I'm trying something a little bit different to add this woven back panel and um, just make it a little bit different looking. So we definitely have, an addition is we've made this a little bit wider because it doesn't have stretch and we've also added this to make it easier to put on because it's not gonna stretch over the neck so easily if it's not stretchy. So we're using this to enlarge the neckline so that hopefully it will go over my daughter's head and we should be able to have her model this at the end of the show today. So, um, all right, so I'm gonna sew around this to attach this to the shirt, okay? So with right, I pinned it right sides together and I think this is too tight to do on the serger. So I'm just gonna sew it on my sewing machine and I'm not really um, sewing with a 3 8 seam allowance. I'm sewing pretty close because honestly, I don't wanna make the hole much bigger than it is. So I'm just sewing along the edge, and I do have my double needle on here, um, because I'm gonna use it for top stitching and things 
as we go along. So, but I can sew with the double needle as it goes. All right. So we've attached it there and then we're going to flip this to the back side. Okay. So I'm going to fold it over and back and then pin it and top stitch it. So can, I'm just going to fold it back. Uh, you probably would want to just run an iron over this real quick as you fold it over. Um, it would probably lay a little bit nicer and would be easier to sew, but I don't have my iron set up in here today and um, I don't want to take the time away from sewing with you guys to go grab it. So I'm just going to make it work and again for me, this is just a, okay, so there's how it's going to look when I've I folded it back and then it will be a nice finished edge. So I'm going to just stitch this and now I'm sewing in um, with a 3 8 seam allowance because I don't, I want it to hold the facing down. So we'll go slow around the corners, try to catch all the edges and I'm trying to keep it lined up nicely because I didn't iron it but it seems to be going okay all right so we're just uh, tacking this facing down And so here is the front or the um, the front of the back and then here is the inside and you can see how this is just nicely finished there and then what we'll do is we'll put it so it ties and um, can close. So um, this is, uh, Teresa, this is a Janome sewing machine and Facebook reverses the video. So it's totally normal. Um, it just, the video is flipped and I should probably tattoo that across my forehead. This video is in mirror because it's one of the most common questions I get. Actually people who are left-handed are super excited because they think all of a sudden that there are left-handed machines in the world and then I have to very disappointingly tell them it's not a left-handed machine. I'm not left-handed. It's just a reversed video. So yeah. Okay. So we're going to, I'm going to, um, sew the shoulder together. Actually, I'm going to sew both shoulders together. Okay. And then we will have, we will be able to attach our neckline. So I'm using the serger. If you don't have a serger, you can use your regular machine for this. I sewed for a long time without a serger. You would just, because um, when you're using knits, you want to make sure that you have a stretch with a stitch with some stretch. So you want to either use a zigzag or a knit stitch um, when you're doing it. Okay, so here's our t-shirt front and back. And now we're going to attach the um, neckline ribbing, okay? So I'm going to leave um, a bit of extra hanging off my back because I'm, my plan is to use it just as a tie at, is as a back closure. So something very simple. You could put a snap, you could put a button, you could do all kinds of things, but I'm hoping to just be able to kind of leave it and just make it a tie enclosure. So um, I'm going to pin I'm folding uh, my neck binding um, together with right sides touching and, I mean, sorry, wrong sides touching and the right side facing out. And then um, I'm going to pin it, stretch it and pin it around my neckline. So of course on the, um, be careful Rose, on the back where it's woven it doesn't stretch because it's woven fabric, but on the front where it's knit, it stretches a little bit and um, 
you want your neck binding to stretch as you sew it. You don't want to make it exactly the same um, circumference as your neck because you want it to be tight and keep everything kind of in place. So um, most patterns, including this one, do, do give you dimensions for kind of a perfect fit and a perfect stretch. But because I am um, making this a little different with the keyhole in the back, um, I don't think there's a spider on my wall. Where are you looking? Does anyone else see the spider? That freaks me out a little bit, but I don't think there's a spider. Or is it gone? Does anyone else see a spider? Dale says there's a spider on the wall behind me, but I think it must just be thread. Are you seeing this piece of thread? Anyway, if someone sees a spider, let me know. Um, okay, he's joking. Oh, you want to sing the itsy bitsy spider? The itsy bitsy spider. Yeah, not now. Okay. All right. Okay. Focus. Someone's trying to distract me uh, with jokes about spiders. Not funny. Um, especially when I live in a place that the spider could be this big. Um, probably. Oh, we're not. We, uh, you can put your clothes on. Um, actually, it'd be much more common to see a cockroach on my wall because here in Hong Kong, we do have cockroaches. Um, but thankfully, they are called, Jap like, they're a Japanese kind of cockroach. And so, they're small. They're not like the big flying ones. So, um, anyway, okay, focus uh, back to my, back to my um, shirt. So I've pinned the um, neck binding on the right side of the shirt and I've left two tails in the back that I'm going to use to tie the neckline closed. Sorry, Rose wants to get dressed here. So um, this is a skirt that I made from one of my patterns. It's called the Rosie Dress and Skirt and you can buy it in my shop. That's a super cute pattern and Rose loves that skirt so she wears it all the time so um, alright so we're back to working on this t-shirt with a woven fabric on the back and a knit on the front and I'm making it with this kind of crazy fabric because it's gonna be part of a peacock cast costume um, so we are I'm gonna stitch the neckline on and I am gonna use my serger for this So you've got three, you really, when you're doing this, you have three layers of fabric. You have two layers of the neck binding and you have one layer of the t-shirt. And so as you're sewing, you want to make sure that you kind of keep everything lined up and sew through all three layers or you have to go back and fix where you might have gotten a hole if you didn't catch something in the layer. So, and you stretch the binding to fit. So I'm just going to sew this along here and then I'll show you what it looks like. You can use a different fabric for the binding. This one I've used the same knit fabric as the rest of my shirt because it has a really good stretch. So anything you use for the binding, you want to make sure that it has um, a good stretch when you're using it. Okay, just wait. Oh, let's see. Oh, that's, that's, is that, can you get it? Is that the front or the back? I'm not sure. Um, all right, so then I always flip it over and double check that there's no holes because I want to make sure that I caught everything, but it looks like we're good. So here is the, um, the front and the back is like this. So I'm thinking we will just um, tie this, keep it really simple because again this is just for a costume and then the back would close like that. So that's a pretty cute way um, for the back. And then here's the front, okay? 
So I'm thinking it's looking good. So what we're gonna do quickly now is top stitch. Um, Nadia, my shop actually doesn't sell products. It just sells um, it just sells patterns for sewing. So um, you'll have to, if you go to naptimecreations.com and then click on the shop button, you'll see all the patterns that I sell. So um, unfortunately, I don't make and sell actual clothes because I just don't have time for that. So, um, but I do sell sewing patterns if you want to sew it yourself. So, okay, so top stitching, I'm going to top stitch the seam allowance down towards the main part of the shirt, and I'm using um, the double needle with woolly nylon in the bobbin. So it has a nice stretch, and I've lengthened the stitch to three, so we have a little bit longer stitch. And then we're just going to sew along the neckline. And you'll have to make sure you come back on um, Wednesday night when we make the tutu skirt to go with this. And I'm going to do the skirt as a no sew version. So those of you who don't really sew but want to try out a little craft project, this one is going to be, I'm just going to use a hot glue gun. And a, oh, you can't have that back here. It's too loud. Okay, go take that out. Um, I'm just going to use a hot glue gun and tool and felt. So I think it'll be a project that anyone could make. Um, and of course, if you don't sew, you could make that skirt and then just buy a t-shirt to go with it or use something, a shirt that you already have around the house. So I'm making this as the top for my peacock costume. Um, not for me, actually. For my daughter's peacock costume. Um, but you could use any shirt that you wanted. So we're, this is kind of a two-part project. We're making the shirt today, and then we're going to make the skirt um, next week. So, all right. There is the top stitch using my woolly nylon on the bottom, bottom and a double stitch on the top. So there you go. Um, if you miss Wednesday's tutu show, you can just watch it on my Facebook page, Naptime Creations, and um, come over and it'll be in my videos. I probably will also post it on my blog, naptimecreations.com. So um, if you, but you'll be able to find it on the Facebook page for sure. So if you don't already like my page, hop over and give it a like, and then you'll be able to find it and come back um, when you wanna watch it later. So um, the videos are all archived there. Okay, so there's the front. Here's the back. We have to put the sleeves on. Okay, so I'm gonna open up the side of the shirt. Now, on this is my honest, um, I'll be honest here. I have not uh, ever done a shirt where the back has been woven like this without some sort of gathering. So this is an experiment. I'm trying this out. So I'm hoping that the sleeve placement um, I'm just, I'm hoping it will pin in okay, even though the back doesn't have any stretch. So when I put in sleeves, I like to pin, unless it's specifically marked to pin the center first, I like to pin the two sides and then work my way into the middle. So that's what I'm going to do today is I pin the two sides and then I'm just going to continue to work into the center of the sleeve so I don't have any stretch on the back so I can't really ease it in but I do have a little stretch on the front if I need it. it doesn't look like I need it looks like it's gonna pin in perfectly okay so there's one sleeve pinned in um, oh Sheena glad that you caught this yeah so another place you can catch all my videos and free patterns tutorials new pattern releases is to join my pattern group and I put the link in this video description so if you want to pop over and um, join my what what do you want open oh where does it go Here. we're doing a little sorting puzzle she doesn't know where one block goes so we gotta stop and help her here for a second there you go 
all done. Yay. Okay, dump it out on the floor. Um, so anyway, so that's another place that you wouldn't miss anything is if you join the pattern group. Um, I post all my live videos there and I all like my new tutorials and sewing patterns get posted there um, as soon as they're up on the blog. So that's a good way to, um, to keep in touch too because my Facebook page, of course, I'm posting like 10 times a day. So there's all kinds of things going on in the Facebook page. But in the group, um, it's a little slower paced, but it's also a really fun way to, um, um, it's a great way to keep in touch with other people and see what other people are making from the patterns. So um, you can post there your versions of my patterns and clothes. So anyway, if some of you haven't joined, I'd love for you to hop over and um, join my group and you can show off what you make and you can also get inspiration from what other people are working on. So um, on my, what? Try it in the other hole, honey. Okay. It doesn't go in that one. Um, on my blog, I have lots of free patterns and tutorials, and then a small shop. It goes in that one that your finger is in. Right here. That one. Um, I Lots of free ones, um, but I also have a few paid patterns that I just are done a little bit differently. And... Um, and so anyway, so you can get lots of free patterns if you want, including this t-shirt pattern that I'm sewing up here is, is free for anyone to download. So you can just follow the link and download it. You can also, while you're over there, check out the other free patterns and tutorials. And if you want to stop by my shop and check out the paid patterns, that's great too. So um, I'm sewing the sleeve onto the shirt right now okay so there's obviously a sleeve okay and um, yes you can definitely um, come back and if you hit share this will save to your timeline which means that you'll be able to watch it on your Facebook anytime you want without having to scroll through and find where it is on my Facebook. Um, because like I said, I do post often, so things tend to move very quickly on there. But if you share it to your timeline, then you'll be able to come back and watch it and save it and um, do it. I'll also, um, eventually, I'm not very good at getting them up there quickly, put this on YouTube. So if you subscribe to my YouTube channel, you'll be able to watch it on there and find it anytime you want. But sometimes, like I said, I'm not very quick at getting these from Facebook to YouTube. Too many other things going on. All right, so we now have a shirt with two sleeves. Oh, what's this bunched up for? Um, two sleeves. Okay, so here's the front, and there you go. Okay, so, yeah, this is for you. Are you going to try it on for me when I'm done? Yeah, this is for you. Yay! Um, so what we're going to do now is we're going to sew up the side seam from down the sleeve to down the side of the shirt. Okay? So... I'm going to start at the end. Oh, before I do that, I'm going to hem the sleeve because I do not like hemming uh, teeny tiny round areas. So I'm just going to take the end of the sleeve and I'm going to fold it back about a half inch and then I'm going to stitch it over here with my um, stitch it over here with my other um, with my double needle. Okay. So we're just going to hem up this sleeve. Um, you can do this after you've sewed the under sleeve um, seam, but I don't like doing this kind of small thing. So, oh boy, so many. So there's the hem, and then we will 
you know, enclose that part of the sleeve. So I'm going to do that to the other side. Mom, I'll go. Where's it go? Hmm. Does it go here? Try that one. There you go. Good job. And here. Okay, you do the last one on your own. It goes here. Flip it over. All right, so hemming this sleeve. I'm glad I didn't forget this step and do the sides first because um, it's definitely a lot easier to sew it here straight. So now I'm going to fold this in half, okay, right sides together, and I'm going to sew down the sleeve and then down the side of the shirt. And then it will really start looking like a shirt. We'll have to hem it, but we are nearing the finish line. So you can see it's not, this actually sews up pretty quick. Um, if you just want to make this like the pattern, that's fine too, but I'm just showing you an alternate version, which is to add in this woven back panel. So, and we'll have Rose try it on to see how the fit is. Again, I'm being honest, I haven't ever really tried this, but I had this fabric that I thought it looked like it would go great with the peacock costume, so I'm trying trying it out. See how it goes. Obviously the like the thinner the fabric, the more flow that it had, it would be um uh it would have better fit. This is a pretty stiff fabric. The last time I used it I made a tote bag out of it. So, obviously it's um not apparel fabric. It's more just um like plain cotton, but I'm trying it out. This is just for a costume, so I'm not super worried about um, that it looks perfect, because we're probably going to wear this. Well, she might wear it more than once. It doesn't look, it doesn't look too costumey. Um, when you sew, because of the way it's fed through the machine, you'll end up with one side longer than the other. And they might have started out the same, but you can see it got kind of pulled and made this. So I'm going to actually have to trim that out. And yes, I am going to hem the bottom of this shirt. Um, but now I need to even it back up because of the way I, it was sewing, it got a little uneven. So I'm going to hem this shirt by just turning up about three-fourths of an inch. That's kind of my go-to hem. Um, but I can turn it to the right side out first. So here's our shirt. Um, it's really coming together. And we'll just, we'll, I'll have to try this on because I just don't know, because this isn't stretchy on the back, how is it really going to fit? I'm not sure how it's going to look. So one more thing, Rose, and then you can try this on, okay? All right, so, but I think it's looking really cute. So here's the sleeves. You can edit the length to make it three-quarter sleeves or whatever you want. Um, and yes, this is an overlock machine. And then this is a Janome, kind of a higher level model. It's not a basic um, sewing machine because it does have several functions, but I would recommend any model to know me. I think that they are great machines. So, and I'm not paid by Janome to say that, but I've had great luck with this machine. So anyway, I would definitely, even a, even a entry level machine that's, the, that's just a basic one, I think is a great place to start. So I'm just finishing off the seam allowance on the edge of the sleeve, because we have this um, tie here. 
Kathy, as soon as I'm finished with this um, video, it will be posted um, back here on Spaceships and Laser Beams, and you can go ahead and watch the full video. You can also hit share, which will save it to your Facebook page, and then as soon as I'm done, the full video will be available. Right now, because I'm making the video, you can't go back and watch from the beginning, but you will be able to in about 10, 15 minutes when we wrap up. So um, if you go ahead and share it or come back to Spaceships and Laser Beams later, you'll be able to watch the full video. So, all right, finishing up by folding under my hem, and I'll just put a few pins in. Like I said, I'm going to fold under about a three quarters of an inch, three quarters of an inch hem, throw a few pins in there, and then the true test will be when we put this on and see how it fits, considering the back does not have any stretch. So like I said, because of that, I made the back piece a little bit wider to um, accommodate for not having stretch. The shirt I cut a 2T, the front and the sleeves, and the back I cut the height of a 2T, but the width of a 3T just to give a little bit more um, a little bit more width to accommodate for not stretching. So we'll see how it works when we put it on her. Um, so obviously this is a technique that I might have to work on and see, but you can definitely make this shirt all in knit. I know that works because I've sewed many of them. So but this is a trial a live trial to see if I can make just add a little different detail to the shirt so I thought putting the woven panel on the back because I liked the fabric so much would be a cute detail so make sure you grab this free pattern you can click the link in the description of this video and it'll take you over to my blog where you can um, Rose is singing over here where you can download this um, the pattern to make this shirt and see lots of other pictures and also a photo tutorial which is step-by-step um, -step photos not a video form so um, and this this t-shirt is meant to be a little bit long that's the pattern so all right so we finished the shirt now it's time to try it on so Let's see. Hey, Rose, would you come here for a minute? Yeah. Yeah. All right. So let's... Sorry, sorry. Oh, what was in your pocket? Ooh, that's a mess. Her skirt pocket. You know how when you um, wash a piece of paper in the washing machine and then all that junk's in your pocket? Well, that's how her skirt pocket looks right now. So something went through the wash in her shirt pocket. So... Um, again, those of you who don't have sewing machines or don't sew but want to try a fun project, come back on Wednesday night and I will show you um, how to make a no-sew um, tutu and then we're going to add some peacock feathers to it to make it a cute costume. So, okay, let's <laughs> see here how this works turn this a little bit all right so I think here's the front of the shirt you can see the fit is actually okay don't jump really nice okay turn around here's the back with the woven fabric it seems to be just fine and then here's this turn around please here's the keyhole we place otherwise it would not go over her head so if you do use a non stretch fabric in the back you need to put some sort of placket or keyhole in the back and I just left these extra ties from the neckline and I'm just finishing this by tying it so um, I think that's a cute look and I'm so here look back I'm so excited to check out how this looks with our tutu skirt you can kind of envision this with the tool um, and we'll do that on Wednesday's show. So again, I'm, this is also a skirt that I made that now has a pocket full of lint. 
um, but this is the rosy dress pattern which is for purchase in my shop so um, you will come back on um, come back on Wednesday and we'll check out uh, we'll make a skirt that's going to be super cute as well and I will be sewing the skirt on my Facebook page Naptime Creations so you want to start over there so anyway you can make this cute top um, whether for a peacock costume or just for a long sleeve t-shirt um, but I'll be definitely taking pictures of this because it's really cute and it turned out great so thank you so much for following along please hop over and like my Facebook page or join my pattern group and uh, it was so great to see you out today so we will see you Wednesday night make sure you stop by and say hi and um, thanks for joining me tonight so have a great evening see you later